thinking of investing, working, or starting a business in the cannabis industry? We've got you covered right here on Plant Problems. Hosted by Tony Frischconnect, Plant Problems takes a different approach to cannabis than what you're seeing and hearing from the mainstream media. Come along with Tony and be in the know about how to invest, work, or start a cannabis business. Let's get the show started with your host, Tony Frischconnect. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Plant Problems. I'm your host, Tony Frischkinek. Today, I've got a great guest. I actually met him a few weeks back at the Hemp Expo here in Denver, Colorado. And everybody was their first time kind of back out over the last year because of what happened with COVID. But, you know, he had some really interesting things. We got into a great conversation and discussing some new ideas. So the reason why I brought him on is I think it could help some of you guys. And in cannabis and hemp, we could use all the help we can get. I mean, what it comes down to is there are new things that are opening up, new things that I'm seeing, financing, uh, different ways of lending. And I think that's probably one of our biggest challenges, not only in as a business, but in cannabis. Uh, there's just There's just not easy ways to attract people. Uh, everybody's growing. Everybody's got a dispensary. So what sets you apart, right? What can make you stand out to your potential investors? So, but before we get into that, I want to introduce Brett Gum from Ag Risk Advisors. Brett, thank you so much for being on, you know, a risk advisor, right? That's right. Yeah. Hey, thanks, Tony, for having me. Yes, yeah, so I am a risk advisor. I grew up actually on a family farm in a little town in Kansas uh, called Johnson, Kansas, and uh, grew up uh, raising crops and cattle. And so I kind of have that background. I kind of grew up, you know, looking at the numbers side of things, really understanding how you got to grow something, you got to, you just got to work financially too. And so grew up on the farm. Then I went to Kansas State University, uh, graduated with an agriculture economics degree, and then I got into crop insurance. And that's really my background. So my background, I got into crop insurance after college. And that was kind of the start of uh, being a risk advisor. And so I got really the ins and outs of it, really understanding where the risk comes from and how we can better manage that risk for our producers. And then I joined Ag Risk Advisors a couple of years ago, and now we are able to offer uh, hemp coverage. And so now we're really able to take that, our knowledge in the agriculture side and apply it to hemp. It's an emerging market, and we're just now able to offer some of those services to the hemp producers. Yeah. It, what's your, the product that you guys are uh, created is not unique to crops themselves, but coming into the hemp and cannabis world, there's, uh, you know, some very uniqueness to it because I remember, and I know this is for hemp specifically, but there were some companies out there that were offering crop insurance. And for those out there that don't understand that, what does crop insurance do for you? So it's basically giving you a bottom line to kind of give you a floor to set yourself, you know, if what's my floor, how low can I go to make it to the next year? Cause that's, that's the end goal, right? It's just making it to the next year and keep that business going. And so yeah, uh, the, the hemp farmers out there, you guys know, like, uh, if you've made it to the next year, it's a win already right there. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And so what we can do is basically we take your average production for at least four years. And if you don't have four years, then you get kind of a county T yield, which has to do with the growing conditions in the county okay. and what you should be able to expect for yield wise. And so we basically take that average of your average yield, and then we can ensure up to uh, 75% of that yield. Okay. And so that kind of gives us a floor there. You know, with the unique things that are coming out as the industry is evolving, especially with hemp seeds and finding true production numbers, all this stuff, it's got to make it easy for you and your job, all, and including the farmer. And so as people are finding these things, you're like, oh, this is an insurance guy. Well, yes and no. <laughs> you know, if you are in the midst and you've been in the beginning stages, 14, 15 going on. I mean, had you had somebody like this? I mean, how many people even know when you talk to them that there's a product like this available? Not a lot. And that's because this has only been the second year that we've been able to offer this. Obviously, hemp hasn't been really legal for that long, but even being able to insure it and giving yourself some coverage has only been the last two years. And so guys really 
they're not familiar with the idea yet. Mm -hmm. um, it's starting to get more common and guys are starting to realize, you know what, I want to be able to cover my some of these risks, like I said, to make it to the next year. And so this is the second year. So now we have a few different products, but the main one is a federal hemp policy. And so it's backed by, you know, the USDA. And so it's a government subsidized program, which makes the cost of it a lot more affordable and a lot more attractive and reasonable for guys to use because it's not necessarily, you know, you're covering a lot of dollars out there. Absolutely. I think going back, you you know, 10 years ago, we were talking, you know, 40 and $50,000 to uh, do these small indoor crops is what they were trying to sell it. And geez, dude, we were just barely trying to survive. I mean, really when it come down to it as an indoor grower, it's like, okay, to the next, like you said, to the next crop, just got to get to the next crop. And hopefully in between, you know, those crops, you have some really solid wins, right? Because you're not always going to have a great year. And <laughs> I know the guys listening out there are like, yeah, hundred percent, man. You know, it sometimes turns into a 50, 50 shot. Like, I think we got it. I think we don't because growing outdoors is a different ball game. Now, speaking of that, do you guys do crop insurance for greenhouses or anything like that? Or is it strictly uh, outdoor ag? It's pretty much outdoor grows. There's probably some stuff on the indoor side, but that's not really what we focus on. It's more of the outside and protecting you know, against mother nature because we know it can be a force sometimes. So for the farmers out there listening, you know, what do they need to know? What are the top things they need to know when they're thinking about a product like this or, you know, managing risk? So on the first side, so there's a few different policies um, that we can do, but the, like, again, the main one is the federal hemp program. Okay. Um, but there's some hurdles that guys need to understand that they got to go through to be able to be eligible for this policy. What are um, those hurdles? Yeah. What are some of those hurdles? So the first one for 2021, first of all, we had to have signed up by March 15th. Um, okay. So for this year, it's really not, you know, if you guys don't have coverage, this isn't going to be the policy for you this year. But going forward, even for 2022, the hurdles are first, you have to have at least one year of production history, which is a little counterintuitive because if you're getting into it, you obviously want to have some production when you're first getting into this. Yeah. And, and it's so, one of those chicken before chicken or the egg, right? Scenarios. Ex exactly. Yeah. And so we just got to be able to, you know, get that first year covered. So there's some other options here, but so on the federal one year of history, you cannot have hemp on back to back, grow hemp on back to back years on the same dirt. They're saying something with the microbials and it's basically affecting the next hemp crop. So we can't insure it. If you guys have like, you know, one field that you guys are just wanting to go back to back on, it wouldn't really work for that. You also have to have a processor contract. And as a lot of these guys probably know uh, here recently, we've kind of hit a glut in the market and some of those contracts are hard to get now, but we have to have it to be able to insure it. Um, so, so those are huge things because you can't just, I mean, you can't just sign over and all of a sudden be ready for this. I want to go back to the first one and talk to you about that because, you know, qualification for a year, like, okay, they've had to have a year crop. What kind of data or information do they have to back that up? So, you know, give these guys an idea of, you know, what do they need to collect so they make sure they fall into those guidelines? Yeah. So, you know, I don't really, I think it's mainly they just don't want everybody getting into hemp and just saying, you know what, I'm just going to go for it. And I guess if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I guess they're trying to exclude that because it is a pilot program. So, you know, if okay, in, usual okay. crop, in usual crop insurance, that's not a thing. You know, if you want to go out and grow a field corn, we can insure it the first year you do it. But I think part of it is you are covering a high amount of dollars and it's still a, uh, you know, it's a pilot crop too. It's, there's not a lot of history in the U.S. for it. Yeah, exactly. So and for example, I want to ask you if somebody was to go out and let's say grow five acres, right? If they came to you, said, we've grown on this land, we've got another plot over here next to this land, because that falls in your guidelines, right? Am I able to grow 10 acres this year and still get crop insurance for that, even though it's twice as big as the one I did last year? Exactly. Yes, you would be able to. You know, okay. You still have that history. Okay. Yes. That's fantastic. Yeah. Because, you know, some of these guys out here, are, you know, the ones I know that take this stuff seriously and not just throw seeds out into the soil, right? They're strategically planning how they're going to expand their business at the same time with all the other variables that happen with outdoor growing. So that's really, that's really solid information to know. So basically, well, and let's go to the second one. Cause you said they don't want you to grow on the same crop. 
you know, it seems like it's like you said, the microbials, but also gives the soil a year to regenerate itself. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you look at what a lot of farmers have done is they let that, those stalks and everything sit in that soil. And with hemp, it's pretty crazy how it can regenerate the soil with just the leftovers. I mean, some amazing things about, so, so let's get into the real piece that I wanted to talk about with, and that's like, how can you set yourself aside and entice investors? I mean, what are some things that your risk management and, and this insurance can do for you as a owner and a entrepreneur? Hey everyone, excuse me for just a minute. We will continue the rest of our conversation in a few seconds. Guys, I want to thank you so much for all your support over the last year, because without you, I couldn't continue bringing you so much great content. So thank you. Today, I have some exciting news that I can't wait to share with you. I have been working tirelessly for the last several months, creating a brand new podcast. This podcast is all about the process of extraction and the equipment that surrounds the world of essential oils. Essential oils are in thousands of products we use every day, from lotions we put on our skin to our favorite soft drinks. And yours truly has the honor of hosting this incredible show. Guys, with essential oils, the opportunities are endless. We invite you to listen in and subscribe to our new show called Extraction Essentials. Come be a part and join me on this epic journey as we explore the world of essential oils. We will be launching brand new episodes every Monday. You can find out more about our show by visiting extractionessentials.com. See you guys Mondays. Now back to the show. They say the money's there and they say the money's there and they say the money's there and they say, and of, I mean, six months and a year goes by like that. So as a startup, this is fantastic. I know, you know, the guys the last couple of years, especially in 18 and 19, they really got beat down on pricing, right? And this is another thing too, is like, well, if I'm able to have my crop insurance, I'm able to make sure that I'm producing a decent product. One or the other happened and maybe I don't. Best thing is, is I don't have to use my insurance, right? That's a great thing. So if guys are going out there and, and I know this is all on circumstance, what should they expect with the subsidized plan that you guys have? Is it, I mean, it's all relative expense, right? But really, is there a percentage or a formula or something that you guys can take and say, yeah, this is about what it's going to cost per acre or this is going to cost you? I mean, how does that work? Yeah. So it's going to depend, first of all, what you're growing it for. It's for CBD, for fiber, for seed. Those are going to have different values. But typically what we're seeing is about 10%, give or take about 10% of whatever coverage you're going to get. That's what you're going to pay in premium. So 10 cents on the dollar is going to give you that coverage that you're looking for. That's not too bad. Um... No, it's really not. It's, I mean, if you think about it in dollar cents, you know, you're giving up your 10 cents to cover a full dollar and that can yeah. go a long way. Yeah. So the government is really putting a lot of money into this then if that's the case. It is. Yeah. So what are some stories of gentlemen that you've actually had coverage where they've said, Hey man, I've lost this crop. I mean, what stories have you seen out and that's happened actually to you and some of, or, you know, around your company that's going mm -hmm. on? Yeah. I mean, last year we had some losses, some guys north of Denver, around the Denver area, and they had some losses. I think part of it was the snow. Obviously, we had severe drought last year in this area, so it just didn't produce. And they lost a good portion of their crop. And so they were able to basically, in that case, an adjuster, just like you know, a car claims adjuster, they come out there, evaluate the crop, mm -hmm. see how much it's worth. And then basically whatever they say the crop is worth based on the amount of bushels or amount of pounds they produce, it basically whatever your guarantee is, it pays up to that guarantee. So then they had, I remember actually visiting a farm in October last year and there was a freak snowstorm that kind of happened. I think it was the first, you know, we usually get a snowstorm in Denver around Halloween, but it was like the middle, it was the end of the first week or the second week in October. I remember vividly visiting a guy and his investors wanted to keep going because they wanted to get produce more CBD. They were concerned that they weren't going to get the best out of it. Well, that night, I mean, I was out in the dirt talking to them about this and they're like, we don't know, man. And I was like, I don't know either. Dude. I was like, cause I could see that I, we could like see the clouds coming over. So we're watching as these clouds come over and they're asking me my opinion. 
And what I think about, I was like, well, at this point, I mean, I don't know what you can really do. You know, if it's coming, it's coming. A lot of these first year guys aren't prepared for what it takes to not only judge the weather, but also harvest the crop in a fair, reasonable amount of time. They don't really understand that. And, you know, I get it from a small scale. So when you magnify it to one, two, five, ten 10 acres, it can take you weeks to harvest depending on how, what kind of ways you're doing it. So, so they ended up, they froze their crop out that night. They ended up saving a lot of it, which was a surprise. But, you know, when you're talking about, you know, they pulled their crops and got them dried and, and ready to go. But, I don't know that they gained that much by getting that extra week or two because of where they were at. Had they had something like this, are the is the policyholder penalized for like not making the right decision and on harvesting a crop earlier when they could have? Or is there anything in like that in the policy that would negate uh, coverage? Well, I mean, the language usually in most crop insurance and, and hemp as well is good farming practices. They want you to follow good farming practices. But the thing is, for Mother Nature, when you're an outside pro, there's really not a whole lot you can do. You can just hope that it works out. And so you got to have that coverage beforehand. But really, like especially in that cold situation, there's really not a whole lot you can do. Now, if you can harvest it, they're going to want you to harvest it. So what the insurance companies really want to see is, is the language in the policy is good farming practices. They want you to follow guidelines that in good conditions will lead to a good crop. And so, you know, if you got weeds or whatever, you know, they want you to control them the best mm-hmm. they can. You know, it's just good farming practices. But like in your case, what you're saying, you know, when it gets cold like that. And honestly, I think that might even been September or something. It was like the second earliest. Snow was it early? Snow yeah. I, I, I knew it was pretty early, but you could be right. It could have been September. It was really early. And so we had some guys that were calling like, man, what do we do? You know, and you basically you just hope it works out. And I think some of that, him, you know, came back, like you said, a little bit. But just following good farming practices and basically, you know, basically you're going to get to a point where you say, well, is this worth harvesting? Because you got harvest expenses and all that with it. And so Uh, that's a great, that's an excellent point. I mean, the amount of cash that it just takes to harvest this, it's almost as much as it takes to grow it the several months. And you guys out there that are doing this for your first time, (laughs) you're going to see because uh, if you don't have the equipment to harvest it, you're going to be harvesting it by hand. And so exactly. you're, you're paying hourly people, right? Yeah. And so when it comes to that point, what we can do is we can get a claim open and basically we'll send an appraiser, an adjuster out there, and then he will appraise the hemp. And then based on that, you can either say, well, so he'll give you an appraisal and he'll say, you know what, this is basically you got a hemp, You have a hemp appraiser? Well, they, yeah, they, <laughs> these guys have to be trained in this. I mean, that's their job. They're out there saying how much, how many pounds can this hemp produce? That's their job. And so they've had to get trained in that since it's a newer policy. But, you know, basically, you know, they're going to tell you this is about how much we think it's going to make. And you mm-hmm. can talk to the adjuster and they'll, they, they try to be fair with you. But basically, you know, if they give you a low enough appraisal, then you can say, you know what, this isn't going to be worth harvesting. And basically, usually they don't want you to take the money and then go ahead and still harvest it and try to get more. Usually, typically they'll pay you whatever it's worth to get up to that guarantee. And then they'll say, you know what, you can't do anything with this hemp. Usually you got to destroy it or leave it idle or, or something like that. So, yeah, so they can just let it die and into the soil if they want to do that. Well, that makes sense. I mean, because then you'd have people manipulating the system and trying to, you know, have their cake and eat it too, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, that's actually more powerful than I thought even the the financial, you know, getting your investors in there. When it comes down to it, if you're able to make that determination, like we just had a bad season, why throw good money after bad? We've spent all this time and money. I mean, that's incredible, man. I, I, some of these things that are coming to the industry now that it's maturing in hemp and cannabis is just blowing my mind because had I had these tools, I mean, I, who knows how big I could have built these businesses back then, you know, it's, it's just, these are something that, you know, I want you guys listening out there to really understand the value in something, whether you have, uh, you know, you talk to a company like Brits or not realize that these are real tools that will allow you to grow and make mistakes. I think that's the biggest thing, Brett, that is 
is hard to understand. You know, when the we were the pioneers in cannabis and the, even the hemp guys, we didn't have any backing. There was what the thing that saved us was our margins, right? We had large margins to run our businesses at the time because nobody was doing it. So that allowed us to make mistakes. But this day and age, the margins are much, much thinner. I was talking to a guy about, you know, what hemp processed at just a few years ago was, you know, they were buying kilos of distillate for $7,000, right? Now it's between like four and 500. <laughs> and I'm sorry, guys, if you guys are hemping out there, I'm laughing. I want you to know I feel your pain. I felt it in the cannabis world too. We had an excess of overgrow, you know, that was just flooding the market. So our prices went down too. So I laugh because I care and I've been there. And that's really the only way I can do is laugh about it because at the time it's super painful. So you guys that are starting this year though, and that have this chance to build up to, you know, something like getting in tied in with the government when some of these government subsidies, I encourage you to jump on top of this, at least know what you need and more detail. I appreciate Brett for sharing some of these details. And I know there's a lot more to this, but this is the matter of you guys making it year three or not. I mean, really, that's what it comes down to. And, you know, just finding out that you're able to quit on a shitty harvest, I'll just say like, if the harvest is going to be crap, well, what's the point? If you're able to survive next year and go, okay, now we can lick our wounds and get into this again and try again. I mean, there's nothing else like that out there right now, not for saving your company. I mean, we're not even, you know, the government's fairly, they're barely allowing banking for a lot of hemp places still. I mean, there, there's some banking coming on, but we still have a lot of challenges. So why not take that out of the equation? You know, I want to thank you, Brett, for sharing these little details. I hope you guys were you know, I hope you guys got something from this because like I said, I met with Brett uh, at the expo show, the hemp expo show, and it, it was great. But finding out these little details are, you know, that'll make or break your business. So I encourage you guys to reach out to Brett at uh, yeah. Ag Risk Advisors. Yeah. And there's one thing, Tony, I, before we leave here, I want guys to understand that, you know, this federal program is not available for this year, uh, but we do, you know, if you guys are starting, you guys want to get some coverage on right now, you can, and you can do that through like uh, basically a hail policy, or there's just a new policy. Honestly, we just did some, a training on it like a week and a half ago. And it's very similar to the federal program, basically the same thing, except you're basically lifting all those requirements. You don't have to have a year of history. You can grow it on the same year, a uh, same dirt, and you don't have to have a pricing contract. Again, that's not a federal program. So it's going to probably be about, we haven't seen the prices yet. I'm guessing it's going to be about double the price. So you still want to get in the federal program, but this is a, an amazing tool to get in that first year when you need some coverage. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, the inhale will destroy your crop in one foul swoop. It's done. It's There's no coming back after that. I appreciate you sharing that too, because I didn't ask you that. So that great information for people out there. So Ag Risk Advisors. I want you guys to reach out to Brett. All his information is going to be on this podcast. It'll also be, so just visit uh, plantproblem.com. It'll be there. So you guys can click on that and find Brett and his info. Brett, last word. People are out there and they want to get into the hemp growing business. What's the number one thing you would tell them? The main thing right now, figure out where you can sell it. It doesn't matter if you can grow it right now, you got to be able to sell it. And CBD, it's tough. I mean, honestly, if, if it was me and if I was getting into him right now, I'd look at fiber. I think there's a lot more viability in it right now, but that's, again, you can get into CBD. You just, you got to look for those contracts because again, you can grow it, but you got to be able to sell it to make money. I, that's a solid advice, man. I, I think that was, that's awesome. And thanks for sharing that. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining me on this episode of Plan Problems. I will see you guys next week. And Brett, thanks a lot for being on the show. Thanks, Tony. You've just listened to another insightful episode of Plant Problems. If you like what you heard so far, don't forget to tell your friends and colleagues. For additional resources or to leave a review, head over to plantproblem.com. Join us again next week on Plant Problems with Tony Frischconnect. We look forward to having conversations with you as we go along this journey.